Happy New Year and welcome to my first scrapbooking process video for 2017. This one is going to be a little bit different. So I'm starting with this beautiful photo that my sister sent me of my gorgeous nephew Jude. And this was a photo shoot that she had arranged to, for his first birthday. And I'm just showing you in photos, in the photos app on my Mac, the settings that I'm using here. So first I have selected A3 plus paper and I am going to select matte photo photo on matte paper because I'm using that uh, if you saw my review of the Pixma Pro 100 I'm using the matte uh, photo paper which is the lower quality of the photo papers that I reviewed in that one so I just make sure that I click on quality and media and I'm going to make sure that I select high quality and I'm also going to click the black and white photo print and uh, my size as I mentioned and then whoo sorry about that can camera angle change there uh, that's the paper I'm talking about matte photo paper and it is the least expensive 13 by 6 13 by 19 paper that I could find it I think it was maybe $24 for 20 sheets at that larger size and so uh, I'm trying to see how much scrapbooking I can do and whether this paper will do me without me having to buy that more expensive photo paper uh, I'm kind of keeping in mind the fact that I don't need these photos to be absolutely beautifully lustrous if I'm going to be using them on backgrounds of scrapbook pages and so on and so forth. Although there will be times when I will want that beautiful lustrous paper that I talked about in the other video. Anyhow, I thought I would just show this process uh, just to give you a sense of how long it would take to print. Now I do have this on four times the speed, so this printer really does take its time. It is a high quality photo printer. Again, that is the Canon Pixma Pro 100 and uh, there is a video about it on my channel. And I'm just showing you here the beautiful quality that this printer prints at even on the lower quality paper. So I'm very, very pleased with it. Now I have printed this one out to uh, 12 point, I think 12.2 by 12.2. I, if you were looking really closely, you would have seen it at, at the footage at the very beginning. And I did that so that I wouldn't have to be too, too careful about trimming it exactly so that there's no white border around the edges. I just wanted it to print slightly larger than 12 by 12 so that I could uh, just kind of be comfortable in my in my trimming process and so I trimmed a little bit off and now it is exactly 12 by 12 and isn't it a gorgeous background to work with ah, I'm so happy so so happy to have this printer so I'm just going to, I'm showing you a little bit of behind the scenes uh, shopping my stash here. So I grabbed my uh, inexpensive flat brush and my Liquitex clear gesso and I brought those over to my desk along with my Tri Plus Art palette which is my large palette that I use for working on mixed media. I use it sort of as a background. Now I'm just going to drip some drips of this right onto my photo here and I want to do a little bit of mixed media and I'm going to focus it here in these flowers that are over to the side of Jude and the first little bits of drops that I that I dripped were just not enough. So now I'm just having a look at which mixed media I want to use. I'm thinking maybe gelatos. Also thinking of maybe my Prima Oil pastels. Also, uh, I just got these for Christmas from my friend Stephanie. Uh, these Hydrus Dr. PH Martin watercolors. And as tempting as it is to play with those, oh look, I've got these uh, distress crayons and I just can't make up my mind. And so I'm, I'm actually leaning towards the gelatos. I'm gonna have a look over here. I've got all of these mists, which I'm now storing in a different way. So I thought I would just kind of, I'm, I'm just kind of, I guess, browsing my stash and thinking about what kind of colors I might want to use on this. It's a black and white photo, so I could go any direction. I'm thinking that I might want to, and there's my uh, shimmers stash. I've only got two items there. Uh, 
I'm thinking that I might go towards a little splattering of of pastels over here and then I thought maybe I want to might want to go brighter so I'm thinking about using these Liquitex inks as well and I really can't make up my mind so I thought what I'll do is I will just start with my letters because the title of this one every time I look at this picture I just think of the Hey Jude song and the lyric that says take a sad song and make it better and I am going to do some journaling about this on the uh on the next on the facing page so this is going to be a 12 by 12 layout that's going to be have a companion page with journaling so I'm not going to do any journaling to tell the story of why I'm choosing that as my statement I mean her, his name is Jude so that's a big part of it now you'll notice that the clear gesso did leave a yellow mark on the background photo so that's just something to keep in mind and that's part of why I'm doing this project is to just play with the media and see how it reacts with the photo paper and the ink and, and whatnot it's very very slight you can see it though uh, those flowers where I applied the gesso are just ever slightly uh, discolored but it, it is very subtle and once I put some media on top of it you're not going to notice it anymore so I took all that time to uh, pick out all of those letters and I very quickly narrowed it down to the black and white ones and uh, I I'm gonna look up the 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 lyrics to the song first so that I make sure that I get it right and I'm really leaning towards these thickers that are on top what I really like about them is that uh, because they're on chipboard they have a they're going to have a white border around them which I think is going to give them really good readability on this darker background and so I'm just going to go ahead and use them even though I took all of those other ones out that's okay and so I'm going to make this the words sad and better be the standout words in this title and then I will fill in the smaller words with um, some other letter stickers with some tile letter stickers and of course if you have watched any of my videos before you know I'm very partial to mini market letter stickers by October afternoon and that is what I'm grabbing right now my entire stash of mini market letter stickers is right here it's very disorganized but uh, I'm I'm picking out any blues and greens he's a boy and I kind of want to go with the blues and greens for this layout that's what I'm that's what I'm leaning towards and so the process of picking out my letters is helping me is helping to guide me in terms of which of my mixed media supplies I'm going to choose I basically want a splattering of mixed media under the word better that will make it kind of emphasize the idea that better is better than the sad so the sad on the top is going to be on that on that black and white background and then better is going to be a big splash of color around it that's my idea anyways and so I'm not too sure whether that letter is going that uh, color that will be splashing behind the word better if it will be a pastel splattering of colors or if it will be more of a bright vibrant splattering of colors so I'm just taking these mini market letter stickers I will tell you the name of this set it is a uh, teal and black mini market letter stickers so they don't have a collection name attached to them I'm just going to scooch up the word better so that it uh, is lined up uh, along the same lines as the rest of the words. You don't want too much of a gap if there's not much of a gap between the other words. And I'm going to position it pretty much right there, maybe slightly lower than, than where it is right now. I'm going to mask off the majority of this uh, background photo so that I don't get any stray splats on it and I basically want to remind myself where the word better is going to fall so I arranged all of that empty packaging I just stick empty packaging into a drawer in my scrap room and I use it for this kind of a purpose and so I have made it so that that exposed place is where the word better belongs I'm looking through my swatches and thinking about all of the media that I just looked through a few minutes ago and I'm going to go and grab my gelatos which was the first thing I looked at when I was browsing my stash oh actually I thought for a moment about using those distress crayons but you know what I find that I need to add a whole lot of water to get the distress crayons to blend and the paper is very thin this but this uh this printer paper and so even with the gesso on it I just I didn't want to do something that that required quite that much water and rubbing and stuff 
Uh, so I'm going to use my gelatos. They're sort of a very similar product, but they blend a little bit easier and with less water and less rubbing. It's really the rubbing that would have been a problem here. I, I think Maybe it wouldn't have been a problem. I don't know. This is part, this is just me playing. And so uh, I have gone with this line of these three lines of color, the blue, the green, and the yellow, although the yellow is not looking very yellow and the green is not looking very green. So I'm blending a couple of gelatos here to get the look that I'm looking for. And so far I have just uh, applied the gelatos and oh darn, I'm missing some, I thought I might've done that. I pressed, I pressed record when I thought I was pressing stop, which got me off track. And uh, you didn't get to see me add the water. And so what I did was I just used a wet brush and swiped some water over top of those three swatches of gelatos. And the result was much, much too light. And so what I did was I grabbed my Liquitex inks, which are much more vibrant. And I decided I'm going to go with the vibrant look. So I just swatched the green over top of the uh, green gelato and that is where I'm at right now and here is where again I had gotten mixed up so I thought I had pressed stop and walk away but this gives me a chance to get caught up in my narration so we're up to speed now so I just skipped ahead and cut out a whole bunch of just waiting for the paint to dry and I used uh, the the Liquitex ink called Vivid lime green the first time and I'm going to do the exact same thing with these other two colors so you'll get to see what I did just dip my my paintbrush into the cerulean blue hue and then I just splattered some with the paintbrush all around and I had done that already with the green so you've already seen that happen now the cerulean blue is quite a bit more opaque than the green and so I'm thinking huh oh, this is going to be a problem and now this yellow which I'm using yellow medium Azo, and this is even even less even more translucent so even even less opaque than the cerulean blue and the vivid lime green so I'm not quite liking this so I'm going to go ahead and do some splatters anyways because I have to match it up so I've splattered all three colors and I've swiped all three colors but I'm not very happy with the fact that one of them is opaque and two of them are uh, are translucent when at least for the splatters. Now this I find that all of the yellow shades of Liquitex ink, at least all of the yellow ones that I have, have this kind of like a slimy substance inside of it that doesn't mix very well. And if I can dip into the sliminess and get some of that on, uh, it doesn't sound very nice, but it, it actually increases the opacity of that yellow. So I tried to get some of the slime out and just put it on there. It sounds disgusting, but uh, as, as you see, not only is it disgusting, but it also doesn't work. So I'm going to switch mediums now. So this is the third medium I've used on uh, on this paper. Uh, now I'm switching to my Liquitex acrylic colors and I love these. These are basics and I'm just mixing a little bit of, what am I mixing here? Brilliant yellow green and thalocyanine green. And this is giving me this really pale light green that is really more pale than I want it to be because my droplets are that darker green because I used the uh, Liquitex ink for the droplets and they dried to just a much darker green. So I'm going to add a little bit of the thalocyanine green and that will mix me up a color that's a little bit closer to a primary green, uh, which is, you know, it's just brighter darker not brighter but darker and that's giving me more of the opacity that I'm looking for it matches up quite a bit better with the cerulean blue that, that I used the Liquitex on and now that yellow was just way too wet it was going to take forever to dry so I just dabbed it off with my paper towel and now the shade of yellow that I'm using here in the basics uh, acrylic color is cadmium yellow medium hue and I always I never know is it cadmium or cadmium can somebody tell me because I'm terrible at pronouncing things and so cadmium cadmium let me know I'd like to know uh, so I just swiped some there and because the paper was really wet because it was sitting that, that Liquitex ink was sitting on it for so long that it really isn't gripping to the paper at this point. I, what I really should have done is dried 
my paper with my heat gun or just waited, but I was feeling very impatient here. And so I'm just globbing it on to get the opacity that I'm looking for. Um, yeah, so here I am with what, like my third or my fourth coat to try to get it matched up with the green. Now I'm not, even though it seems like I'm really fussing, I'm trying not to fuss too much because I know that this is going to be mostly covered by letter stickers anyways, but I do want it to look reasonably decent. So I waited for it to uh, dry a little bit longer and uh, then I'm here I am coming back and I'm gonna make a little bit of a mess and clean it up and cover up that uh, little bit of paint that was left on my palette so that I don't dip my wax paper in it again and uh, now I'm just going to lay out the letter stickers for the word better and I want some of the blue to be showing underneath because I'm going to play on that blue and put maybe some blue pattern paper or an, some type of a horizontal strip that that is going to begin with the blue paint and then maybe work its way into something else. I don't know exactly. I haven't looked at my embellishments at this point. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know I want to draw upon the blue. So I want some of the blue showing underneath the letters. The paper is still a little bit warped and it has flattened down now. It's been a couple of hours since I did this and it has flattened down now, but at this point in my process, it's still quite uh, warped and wobbly. So, but the letters are sticking to it fine because the paint is dry. It's just the, the, the paper itself is not dry all the way through. It's dry to the touch. So I'm trying to lay out these letters in exactly the way that I had them laid out on the wax paper. And that's really easy to do because the wax paper is see-through. So you can kind of get a sense of where it goes and then pick up your letter and quickly swipe the wax paper away and place it in exactly the same spot. So I want all of these to be pretty much left justified, although the smaller letter stickers are in a little bit more, indented a little bit, tiny bit more than the larger letter stickers, but I think it, it looks okay that way. So I'm almost finished spelling these out and there we go. So this is what I, this is the idea that I had in my head was that the first part of this title would be on gray, like on a black and white background. And then the bottom part of the title would be more colorful, which kind of represents the theme of taking a sad song and making it better. So this is some trim from Studio Calico. It's very old. It's called Scraps. And uh, there's two different types of textured, um, it's tissue paper, and one of them has a scallop on it. And so I'm just taking the blue one, and this is what I'm going to do to play off of the blue paint swatch is I'm going to put this blue tissue paper, and I did fold it to give it a little bit more dimension. And also to just make it thinner. And then I also had these, these border stickers from October afternoon. They're from Travel Girl, from the Travel Girl collection. And I really liked how the gray, it just kind of brings a pop of gray, which otherwise the, all of the gray elements are way in the background. It just brings that gray back up to the foreground, which I kind of like. It, it seems to pull it all together. And since I had two little swatches left, I thought I'd play around with the idea. I wasn't planning to do this. I was going to leave the, the top be just plain, but I kind of like it capped off there with the extra trim. So I'm going to do that too. I'm thinking about using these buttons and I don't know if you can see them, but I have these buttons from Dear Lizzie that, uh, oh darn, I don't think I show them. Maybe I'll show them a little bit later. Uh, I'm not going to use them, so it doesn't really matter, but they do, they would have looked nice, but I just didn't want to add too much. Much. So there I just did the exact same thing. I folded the tissue paper and then layered the sticker over top and it's kind of just going to cap off the top of this title. And now here I am at my sewing machine. I am going to sew just the strips of tissue paper and border sticker. I'm not sewing the rest of it. I had to move my needle over a little bit because I was going very close to those thickers. I thought about sewing just 
horizontal lines all the way across all of the letter stickers or at least all of the small letter stickers but I decided not to I thought that might look a little bit too busy and sometimes less is more and I think that the stitching makes more of an impact when it's in these two small places instead of being all over the place in this case there are those buttons that I'm thinking about using those are from dear Lizzie from a collection from a couple of years ago I'm going to use washi tape to hold those down because I didn't back stitch my stitching and I really like how this looks. It's so fun and colorful and yet black and white. So here are, here's just a case that I keep some embellishments in and I'm just having a look at what embellishments I have. I have this, it's kind of like a pie chart with some of the same colors, but it does introduce some new colors that I'm not, I'm not really in love with the idea of introducing that orange uh, and that darker blue. So I did take the foam adhesive off of it so that I could just lay it there and not commit. It's so it's not sticking to anything. It's just sitting there. And meanwhile, I think what I'm doing is maybe you'll see. Oh, there we are. Yes, I went to get my brads because I had a feeling that I had some brads that might pick up on these green and blue and yellow, uh, this green and blue and yellow color scheme. And sure enough, I'm pretty sure that these brads are from either basic gray or October afternoon. Uh, actually, I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea where those brads are from, but it's, it's a really cute vintage looking brad. I am going to take the little legs off of my brad, which I almost always do these days. It will keep me from, I, I think that if I had to poke a hole in this project, the background paper is so flimsy that I don't think it would, I think it would crease really easily in the process of doing that. So I don't want to do that. I'm just going to stick it on with a glue gun. Now I do have two other brads that are a little bit out of frame. I think you'll see them in a second uh, that I'm, I'm auditioning for this, for this project, but I'm not going to use it. I might, I might've put them back by now, but I did pick out a couple to match and I decided to just go with one because it seems like this is one of those pages where less really is more the uh the photo the the background photo itself is really the star of the, of this page so i do have some photos to show you but first i thought i would show you this a little bit slowed down so that you can see it up close in video format and i thought i'd take a bit of time to tell you a bit about uh what i did to make it easier on myself for experimenting with different media because you see, you'll remember that i i started off using gelatos and then i switched to Liquitex inks and then I switched again to acrylic paint and uh, the thing that allowed me to do that was I just told myself this could be a throwaway so I, I thought I have this printer I have more paper if I mess this up I'll just do it again and I thought that it, this would give be a good opportunity for me to just practice with a new media which is this uh, inkjet printer paper uh, and just see how it takes paint, see how it works with gesso, and um, just play around a little bit. So sometimes just giving yourself permission to experiment and play, and even if you don't like it, you can always throw it away or start all over again. Uh, sometimes that's what you need to do to be able to take that plunge, because as I was sitting there in front of that big giant pit, um, image I was feeling a little intimidated like I wasn't sure if I would do a great job and so I'll encourage you to just kind of give yourself permission to just play and let go and not really care if it turns out and it might turn out great like this one did thanks for watching and have a really great scrappy week